Welcome back! In today's video, we're looking at the GMK Tech K1 Mini PC. As this chipset is slightly old, it can be picked up for an absolute bargain. It can play the latest PC games, and it doesn't compromise when it comes to emulation. Can this Mini PC keep up with the competition? Let's find out! Welcome to Team Pandora! Subscribe. So this came. It's another Mini PC from GMK Tech. They sent us this Mini PC in exchange for this video review. This box is very similar to any other GMK Tech model, and today we have the K1. Ah. So this Mini PC is not moving about. If you soon as unbox one of these, it's exactly the same. And this here is what came in our box. We have the GMK Tech warranty card, an instruction manual in English, Chinese and Japanese, a one and a half meter HDMI cable, a vase mount, with this we can stick our mini PC to the back of monitor. Over here we have a power adapter, this one runs at 19 volts, 6.32 amps, at 120 watts. We have a cable included to plug up to the mains. It's the main attraction, the mini PC. It's got a good weight to it, and it looks very clean. Looking around now we have the power switch, 3.5mm audio jack, USB-C, two USB 3.2 ports, and a pinhole for BIOS reset. Some vents for cooling, and on the back with the DC in, two HDMI 2.0 ports, two more USB-A's, 3.2 and a 2.0, 2.5 gig Ethernet LAN, and the Kensington lock. And underneath we have more holes for air intake, and also the area for the face amount. And if this all seems deja vu, you're completely correct. These are the same case as the GMK Tech K2, and if it wasn't for the stickers, we wouldn't know which is which. These are my settings on the holodeck. The top comes off very easily, and both the memory and NVMe are very easy to access. We have the same Lexar 610 Pro, but in the K2, things did get a bit toasty up here, so we added the heatsink. Memory is the same, two sticks of crucial DDR5-4800. Well, let's compare these two processors. If we're looking at the 6800H, we have 8 cores, 16 threads, and it boosts up to 4.7 GHz. And the 7735HS raises that by 0.5. It also has an adjustable TDP up to 54 watts and one extra graphics shader. These two mini PCs are very close. Here's a quick look at the full specs, and we definitely have some muscle here. We only have the one NVMe slot. It'd be interesting to see how well this can push games against the K2. We'll be needing a wireless keyboard and trackpad and a monitor. And as soon as everything's connected up, we're into Windows 11 Pro setup screen. And here we just need to set up the region and language. Remove all these ticks to be the resistance against Skynet. It's inevitable. And around five minutes later, we're ready to go. Once we connect to the internet, Windows will be activated. Then we had no problems updating Windows to the latest version, and also the AMD drivers too. If you're playing games, make sure to do this, as it'll fix bugs, give higher performance, and better system stability. In regular Windows tasks and applications, this mini PC flies. Here's some YouTube in 4K. Internet shopping and online browsing is also no problem. Let's get into the benchmarks. First looking at Crystal Bench, we have a Lexar 610 Pro. The speeds are fairly decent, but doesn't utilize the full speed of the PCA4 slot. We've got some fairly good numbers in User Bench, and according to this, the only place it's lacking is the GPU. Here's a 3D Mark score, and if you've not noticed yet, this is really familiar. If we compare the benchmark numbers, all the scores for the 6800H are extremely close to the 7735HS. The small bump in speed is clearly visible, but it looks like a refresh or rebranding rather than a significant improvement in the next generation. Let's check out some games. <laughs> As we're too cheap to buy Starfield, here's Elite Dangerous. And I've totally forgotten how to fly. Tekken 7. 1080p, high settings, full speed. If we change the resolution to 1440p, we get 42 FPS. If we lower it down to medium, we get full 60. Counter Strike 2. Fallout 4, 1080p, high settings. And Dota 2. I'll prove I'm the best. We tried it in 1440p, we got around 60 FPS with some dips. My time has come. 
We can raise the TDB to 45 watts in the BIOS, but rather than up our FPS, it gave us a significant increase in temperatures. But raising the TDP is not the only way to get more performance from the Ryzen Mini PCs. In AMD software, we can use something called Radeon Super Resolution. This essentially upscales a lower resolution to your current display settings. So you get the speed and lower temperatures of 720p in either 1080p or 4K resolution. So here's Fallout 4 in 1080p native, and now Fallout 4 from 720p upscaled to 1080p. So let's test out some emulation. We'll be using Batacera Linux as always. And first up, Commodore Amiga, Jim Power. Arcade games like Killer Instinct 2 also run full speed. Summon Thomas Wave. And Sega Model 3. We'll move on to the consoles now. First up, Dreamcast. This is also pff, full speed. Xbox. On a PSP, got a war chain to Olympus. It's running at six times native resolution. PlayStation 2, upscaled to 1440p. On PlayStation 3, Shadows of the Colossus running at a full speed of 30 FPS. GameCube F-Zero GX. And finally some Wii U with Mario 3D World. So this little mini PC is amazing for emulation. When it's idle it pulls from 10 to 15 watts from the wall, and when it's under load, just over 60. Here's how it sounds at idle. And when it's under load. I think it's about time for the pros and the cons. The GMK Tech K1 is ideal if you're looking for a decent mini PC and don't want to break the bank. It looks nice, has decent parts, and can play many top tier games. Unfortunately, the area at the top where the memory and NVMe is located can get pretty toasty. The GPU is quite limited without super resolution, and with HDMI 2.0 we're limited to 60Hz in 4K. At the end of the day, finding a mini PC with this much power at $380 is incredible. There's no real disadvantage to this over the K2, and if you ever need to choose between them both, go with the cheapest option. As we finish off with some 1080p Tekken 7, upscale to 4K with Super Res, here's a big thank you to all those on our Patreon. Here at Team Pandory, we make video reviews like this, make tutorial guides, and fix them cheap arcade boxes, as well as the A500 Mini. If you'd like to support our work, please jump on. Or a simple like and subscribe would do us a double. Anyway, this has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra! Round 2. Fight. I always have this problem when they say that it will not fit. I make it fit. <laughs>